As you know, me and Phil have been looking at the staircase at the Regency project. I also haven't done a monkey tail for a long time, so what I was looking to do was refresh my memory. Now, I looked in the relevant books, but the other thing I have done is looked online, and this guy called Peter Jelly, there's nothing this guy doesn't know about stairs. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, look at the quality of the craftsmanship in that monkey tail. Absolutely beautiful. Please check out Peter Jelly's website. It's called KNO Stairs. It's a really cool site. It goes through all of the details. Obviously, I've stated that I was a little bit rusty. I forgot how to set out a wreath and a monkey tail. I went to his website. It explains everything in detail. It's really easy step-by-step -step process so please check it out he's a really cool guy hope you enjoyed the video make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification bell cheers guys this is always known as part of the reef okay guys when it then comes into this section here that's your monkey tail I literally operate up like this so I'm just gonna then mark the angle of the handrail on this block that represents the underneath the handrail and all I've done is then come off this parallel to then give me a nice guideline, haven't I? But you can see that's the same rake and it's really important to utilise that rake when I'm gluing this next piece of timber on the side. Now I know the underneath the handrail, if I glue it from there and then I'll come to the top here, that gives me just an extra little bit of material, doesn't it guys? So I'll measure this coming down here, which is this line on the side here. There you go. That then represents the thickness I need, and that, that's the rake, isn't it? So what I'll do is I'll mark that through like that, mark the next one through, and then that's my width. I'm gonna cut that to 80 mil, and then I'm just gonna stick it then straight on there and be ready to go. This is the bit that's now coming up. If you can imagine this section here, will continue down here like this. All of this through here gets massively thinned out. But what I'm going to do now is you can see where the wreath is actually connected. I know there's a handrail bolt in there somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut just before that line. And then what I'll end up doing is cutting around here, around there, around there. And then tapping the chisel off, exposing that handrail bolt, which will allow me then to start then mechanically fixing the new wreath then to it later on. Look at the quality of that clean joint all the way around. I mean, that is just so good, isn't it? That was done with the chisel and the plane, but that's beautiful and clean, isn't it? Look at that, it's loosened it for me. There you go. So the first time this has been unscrewed for the last 130 years. How cool is that? So that's the handrail bolt. Now what you'll find is that uh, hopefully I can reuse this handrail and this bolt system. Now, when you measure rise and go, it's always from face of riser to face of riser. The measurement on the nosing is 32 mil. So measure from there to that, which is 340. Knock off 32 mil, so that means it's then 308. There's a 10 mil variance between, because look, that's 330. That one's 340. That one's 330. That's 340. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the go at 335 minus then the 32 mil nosing. And then the rise on that is 175 on that one. 175 on that one, 175 on that one. That's lovely and consistent, that's what I want. We'll go back downstairs, we'll set the jig up. That allow me then to sit the wreath on. I can then start working on it, guys. Face of riser to face of riser, 303. So I'm gonna now mark it on the board here and then that will then give me my pitch that I require then to set this piece of timber at. Because once I set this, I know then I've got everything perfect how I want it to be, guys, okay? So the first measurement I wanna do is 303, then 303 there. I then measure up then from top of tread to top of tread. It was 175. Let's make that measurement off that ply. It's 350. This is lovely. So we're going to go 350 here, like that. There we go. Check that's nice and square, it should be. Yep, it's good. So, next thing is 
303. Where's three there? That's three really well, so that's that. Okay, I'm gonna measure that off edge. 607, there we go. That's that, just check it there, square, that's good. Beautiful. And then the last one I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do that 175. Now that will give me enough points to set up my pitch line. If you imagine this is face riser, so it's from that point there, and then you go to the next face riser to the where the actual tread is, to that point here, and then obviously then to this point here I've just marked. So that then becomes my pitch line, and that will then be the angle of what the handrail is coming down the staircase. I'm gonna set a jig up to this angle, coming off here, drop it down. I'm then gonna screw it to this bed. I can then anchor this, then on that line, because obviously this here is going to represent the bottom of my handrail. And I'm gonna take then all the depth out, because look. The reason being is as the wreath turns, it needs the extra material to turn and raise round, and that's why we've got it, guys. I want to be able to cut this point here, and this point here. So if I cut that angle out, when I then put it onto another piece of timber that's gonna go on the bottom like that, it'll work out perfectly. Set the line. I'm gonna pull that forward like that, because that's my connection detail there. The jig itself only needs to be about this sort of size. That'll give me enough to screw down to the bench, but then also enough to then clamp where I want to clamp it. So I reckon if I make it 700, that'll be perfect there. And then I use these as guides. There we go, that's it, like that. That goes up tight and flush to the ply. That then comes to this point here, goes to my line, like that. And what will happen now is I'm gonna put a piece in between here. So then I know that's my set angle then. So I'll put a couple of screws in here, a couple of screws in there, I'll get a couple of screws in there, but then when I then stand it back up, that's then gonna be the pitch of my staircase, which then allows me then to rest this on, clamp it on. I can then start to work on it quite comfortably. We know that the handrail, when it comes off here, and steps in 32 mil. And then what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna step in then, so 400, so from the outer to this edge point here needs to be 400 mil. So look at that, 400 mil, get in. Now, the one thing I'm gonna do is that is the size of my handrail that I'm doing. So if you can imagine, the width of this handrail here is exactly 65 mil. That'll be my handrail. I wanna pull that right down and think to myself, right, that's where it's gonna curve on that plane all the way around. It's just a rough guide, that's all it is, to allow me to start to shape my wreath. I'm gonna cut this section off here because it'll end up getting in the way. I can see my curve coming through here, so what I will do, just take off the fat for now. marked here all the way around the curve itself so I'm going to come round in myself that's the thickness of my handrail so look if I draw that section through here guys and then mark on the underneath you can actually see then that handrail as it comes down like that and that's called the flat of the monkey tail then so I'm just gonna mark round this is where we make the bold steps with a bandsaw.
point there and the inner point here is really important that we don't lose track of that because that's the important bit, not this bit out here. Because the simple reason being, if I cut to that line and then squared it off, I'd actually end up coming up here somewhere and I don't want that. So I need to make sure I cut this line through here. I then repeat this then all the way down here. And I'll draw this in. You can see I'm now going to start to pull the, the wreath part of it in. What I'm going to do, just so I can make sure I'm happy with it, I'll start taking out the meat of the material around here first. And that's then representing the top of the actual handrail itself. We know this line is absolutely spot on where it needs to be. So what will happen is I've got a little bit of play up there. You can see here, that's the thickness. So I'll probably end up taking that much off the bottom because then that allows me then to pull this wreath so if you imagine, mark that little bit there, mark that little bit there. And you can actually now see the line coming through here on the roof. And that's really, really important that I keep that because I don't want to lose that line. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep on shaping it bit by bit by bit, and then taking the fat off and then getting it to where I want to be. together now just to flatten this out a bit more. Get this nice and parallel through and as it then sweeps this corner this is the bit that it turns here and I'm really really happy with the way this is flowing now. That line looks lovely running all the way through and then all of a sudden just at this point it starts to raise up here doesn't it? See it? So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to level that up. That looks really, really nice the way that flows. And then it hits here, look, you can actually see there's a bit of a, a lump there. So that measurement from the bottom here is 78mm. That is going to represent the top flat part of my monk tail. start working this line all the way around because this line that then shoots into this corner here comes all the way around and then this dives into it get rid of the fat here that will allow me then to cry into this uh, corner point and start to uh, round this off then so now I'm going to pull this round here So I'm going to ease that into there now. I need to get this flush coming through here. And as this then comes down, I've got to camber this off. So I'll then pull this line all the way through here. I'm starting to now see the shape of this in here. So what I'm going to try and do if I can, I'm going to take a little bit of the fat out here. So when I spoke shape this, I can get pretty close then to this reef line. This will then be curved round here and through here. This inner line here, as that runs through there, look, it's actually striking exactly on that same pencil line. So you know the two are actually absolutely spot on.
see now that's really starting to shape underneath there. Really all you've got to do is just got to flatten it off a bit more. But now I'm sort of starting to get to a point where I can start running mould. You can imagine once I get this lined up upstairs and get it exactly right, I'll cut this nice and square through here. I'll just draw around this and then that'll be it, I'll be away. Mm -hmm. 